Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 7, Episode 7. This will have spoilers, so if you don't want to know what happens, go ahead and watch the program and come back. And before we begin, I want to say this is my facial reaction to one of the finalists in this program, and I don't want to badmouth anybody. We'll get there. It's just inexplicable to me. Let's get started. And if you would think of it, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe. That would really help my little efforts here. And now let's look at the program. We begin as we always do, looking at the self-portraits and the artists holding them. Now these were the self-portraits that got them onto the program. You can submit two, and many people do submit more than once to get on the program. And these are all very confident and very good paintings, so I had very high hopes for this episode, but we are in for a rocky ride, let me tell you. Um, that that's all I can say right now. I, I I am still a little I'm still a little shook. I gotta say, but everybody here looks like they are capable. And what is lovely is we get to see how they like to represent themselves. It's fun to see the innovation and the creativity. This is a watercolorist, so you know, as the watercolor coach, I'm going to be really excited about that because we seldom have a watercolor painter on the program. Here's an, another really beautiful sensitive piece. It's it's usually it's kind of unusual sometimes for a woman to do a nude of herself, and and yet we all know male uh, artists, uh, especially in in the past, uh, revere the the female form. But that's a different subject. Now let's look at our models. Our first celebrity model is Jane Herrux, and she is known for Ab Fab and also for Little Voice. I'm sure she's known for lots of other things. She is a great comedian. She's probably a great actress as well. She's very petite and she has very fair coloring. I really appreciated that she didn't wear a lot of makeup the way some of the um, models do because that helps us see the planes of her face. Now, four hours into the program, the artists turn their easels around and we get to see what they have done. And this particular section of the program was um, weak for me. This has um, this suffers from what I, I talk about sometimes about using too much titanium white in order to get your lighter values so that the overall coloring ends up being very chalky and looks very washed out as if this painting had been put in the washer and dryer. You know when you put a new pair of jeans in the dryer, you know, they're, they're kind of uh, blue, and then two years later they're kind of washed out? <laughs> that's what happened here. And that, I think that's because of the heavy use of titanium white, and it would have been a better choice to mix for lightness instead. This is very unusual in that it's almost like a, um, an exaggeration of the way she looks. Also very weak in terms of color use. So I, I'm not sure what they were seeing, but it would have, uh, and I do like the soft color here. I just think although it has a resemblance to her, it's aged her into being about an 80 year old. And sometimes that happens when people will see um, wrinkles or, or very fine lines or, or something on the face and then they'll over exaggerate it. You know, paint the forms, not the lines that you see, and you'll you'll get a better, better representation. So anyway, that's the second one, um, and we pull away. It's a fairly large piece, and it looks um, it's it's better from there. She doesn't look quite as as old and haggard, um, but somehow doesn't really convey her sparkling personality to me, which is important. Now this is the one that I have to say I am uh, disturbed about. I don't even know if I can talk about this. We see so many painters who enter this program and they're such good painters. And then this comes up and I just don't get it. I don't even know how to begin to talk about it. And I, I, I love all art. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to represent her even. But this is, this is like, w were they even in the same room? Did the, per why, why? Oh, you see, I, I have to admit, I am upset about it. And that's because I'm passionate about the program and I love the program. So which one does Jane pick? Holy smokes, to my surprise, and I'm sure to yours, and it's inexplicable to me, but she chooses that one. And I think that is one rough 
painting. That's all I can say about it. I don't get it. Now on to the next. David Haig is the next one. He is an actor. I'm not familiar with him, but he has a very uh, open face and, um, you know, we, we can see, we, you know, we get the advantage. One of the advantages of painting somebody who doesn't have a lot of hair is you get to see the actual shape of their face, which helps you get the proportions of the features in place a little bit better. Now, I didn't get a shot of this, so I had to put a card in instead. Four hours in, the artists turn their easels around and we get our first chance to see what they've done. And this is a stronger group, which I was happy to see. Here's the first one up. This is a very, very standard portrait of somebody, almost as if, um, you know, if you wanted to book someone to do a portrait of yourself, here's the guy that can do it. He'll do it successfully and, and will get a likeness. And it, it's amazing that he did this in four hours. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful job. And you see how there's no titanium white going on there? So he's kept his saturated color, which I really appreciate, especially after seeing the last group of painters. And close up, just, you know, absolutely perfect in terms of nailing the likeness. So it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece. But there's one that's coming up that I think is even more exciting. But uh, hashtag Joe is always wrong, they don't like it. Now this is the watercolor. And this is actually a large watercolor to my surprise. Um, moving that amount of water around and having control over it when it's a large size is really, really hard. She did a really good job. Um, but I wonder what would have happened if it had been smaller, if she would have been able to have more saturation and more, um, more, more form in those in those different areas I, i'm not i'm not sure about that she definitely had it in her self-portrait so i think she she could have accomplished that but that is that is boy you have to mix a lot of paint um because it gets absorbed by the paint or paper when it's a watercolor now this is the one i was really excited about because for me this one has an actual capture it not only shows him in terms of oh i recognize this person but it also captures a mood it captures a moment it captures some personality and you see how titanium white is not overwhelming and becoming chalky. Um, it's, he's got some greens in there for his darker shapes, um, which plays against the uh, oranges. So you've got red and orange going on, which makes that particular whole, whole um, person that he is there very exciting. It's exciting. And I like that she broke up that back space into like a, a pixelated kind of thing going on. I probably would have cropped it. It seems like it might be a little bit more rectangular than it needs to be, but wow, that's a great painting. I thought this would win the program today, and you already know from my narration, it does not. So, but I love the program, I love the program, I love the program. Let's see which one David picks. <laughs> and he picks the one that, uh, Oh, he picks, he doesn't pick the one that I thought he would. He goes for the very standard uh, kind of traditional portrait. Now I like standard traditional portraits. Believe me, I really, really do. But um, I was really blown away by the one that had what I felt had more of a capture of his personality. So this is the one that's going home and um, hooray, it's an honor and so good. Now the next model up is Jordan Stevens. He's a musician, actor, and a presenter. And he brought his dog with him. And so, you know, the minute you bring your dog with you, you're a winner in my book. Oh my gosh. Who doesn't love dogs? All dogs. They're, they're the greatest. That's all I can say. I mean, painting, painting and people, then dogs. But I consider dogs people too. And look at him. Oh, he's adorable. I would like to paint him, which nobody did paint the dog now that I think of it. I don't think so anyway. Well, we're about to find out. So four hours in, the artists turn their easels around and we get to see what they've done. And this is also a very varied group. I don't think as strong as the last bunch that we had, but, but let's see what happens. All right, here's the first one up. Um, um, I don't have a lot to say about this one. It, it's, it has a flatness. You know, you, those cheeks aren't round, they're flat. So there's a certain degree of um, forms that's missing. I like it better there. 
yeah, cropped, it's better. It reads a little bit better. There's a glare going on here, though, and that, that might be getting in the way. I'm not sure. Uh, you know, for me, your art has to like hit me right in the chest. Like, oh man, that's great. That one didn't do it for me. I don't know why. Here's a second one. Uh, looks very much like him. She's a very, very good draw drawer or drafts person. So this does have more of a capture, don't you think? You can sort of see the personality. You kind of feel like maybe this person is looking at you or beyond you. That's what I want. I want something to look alive, not like it's been, um, you know, like a taxidermed animal that's been stuffed. Yeah, that's really, really nice. That's a beautiful job. Hmm, she's a strong contender. Wow. Woo. That is, that is really nice. I, I, I'm going to need to look her up because uh, I think I'm interested in seeing more of what she does if she doesn't continue on in the program. It's also a really good size to work in, too. All right, let's see the next one. Next one, oh, oh, okay. Well, this just, you know, in terms of contrast, it's way weaker than the one we just saw. That's all I can say about it. It just is. It's, uh, it also has a flatness. It doesn't really rec uh, look resemble him. Oh boy. Well, that's that's a bit of a disappointment for me. Not that I could do better, believe me, but I'm here to talk about the program. So let's see which one Jordan Stevens picks to go home, which remember is a big honor. So whether they proceed further in the program or not, this is still a big deal because this program can change your life. Oh, he picked this one. Well, um, that is why art is subjective. Everybody likes different things. And that's why and that's why there's horse racing as well. All right, final judging begins. Now the final judging, it's been a long day. They've painted for four hours altogether, but that was two hours, then a lunch break, and then two hours. And oh boy, to have that amount of concentration and, and to hold it together with the noise and the television lights would just be, you know, beyond anything I can imagine. But these people are willing to do it. So I thank them for their, I thank them for their service, <laughs> for my entertainment. And only three of them will go on to the semifinals of this episode. The first one they pick is the watercolor. Now, I'm thrilled that they picked the watercolor simply because it's a watercolor. And I just feel like watercolor is so unrepresented in, in this program and kind of in general. Here's the second one. We talked about this. This is a very, very strong piece. So I think she's a, a, a very strong contender as well. And the last one, you, you know how I feel about this. I'm trying to be really nice. I'm trying to be really nice, but this person took the spot of somebody else, and that is what is irritating me. All right, here's a self-portrait on the left compared to what they, the person did today in the four hours, and I can honestly say I completely don't understand it. I just don't understand it. I don't even understand it as abstract. You know, if I squint my eyes, it just looks like a Rorschach block to me. And the one that she did today is... So, I don't even want to say underwhelming as much as it is disturbing. I, I just, okay, I've spoken enough about it. Here's the watercolor painter, and I think that her submission is so strong. You know, she really, really loaded her brush on that self-portrait and put a lot of layers on without dulling things down. She did a great job on that one. It has a lot of impact. I, I just don't think she was able to have the time to do that today, but she's very capable of doing it. So I do hope that they will advance her, but I don't know if they're gonna judge her on what she did as a self-portrait or what she did today. Now, this is probably who they're gonna pick, although I'm always wrong, but the reason I think that they'll pick this is because of consistency. Your art career is based on consistency. Can you have a recognizable style and can you produce good work over a period of time? And this clearly shows that this person can do this. So now we go to the final judging. The judges will pick just one to go forward in the semifinals. And I don't know who it's going to be yet. Oh, uh, they can't pick two. So, um, you know, I want the watercolor one to go forward, but, but I also think the, self, uh, the portrait on the far right is really, really strong. And if they pick the one that is disturbing to me, I'm still going to love the program because it's just like our children. We love our children despite their faults or their differences, <laughs> but it's going to be tough. And the winner is dun, 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 this one. Yay. Good. I'm looking forward to seeing more about her. And I also want to Google and find out more about her as well. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color, and I'll see you next time. Okay. Bye-bye.